Welcome to Sterling High School here in the 2D studio. I'm Jared Claiborne. This is Scott Manlove, and it is Thursday, June 3rd, 2021, and we're happy to be here with you today. Coach, how are you doing? I'm doing well. Great season, great, great school year, getting ready to wrap it up. All right, awesome. So we're going to get into the end of the spring sports here soon in a minute. A couple announcements. Uh, the big announcements are for seniors and graduation. We're excited about senior week. Senior week is coming up the week of Monday, June 14th through graduation date, which is graduation on Thursday, June 17th at 6.30 p.m. We're going to hold that date as best as we can, pending all the numbers and everything. Uh, we're excited about that information. We had a Zoom parent meeting on Monday night explaining some of the details to the parents and the most updated guidelines as far as their ticketing and the procedures and we'll continue to follow up with that. If you missed that and you have questions, please reach out. Mr. Redman will be following up with more details in a formal letter that goes out annually regarding graduation. So that will be coming out. The one thing I do want to tell you is that seniors, their academics will be finishing up on that Friday, June 11th. We'll begin collecting the senior tablets on June 10th and 11th. And then we're going to settle fines at that point. So seniors must turn in their tablet June 10th and 11th if they're a blue or silver person. So if you're fully remote, you need to come in on those days. We will give you your cap and gown when you turn in your tablet at those times. And if you are a, a early graduate, you want to participate in that as well. Or if you are a fully remote student, you want to participate in that to make sure we get the tablet, you get your cap and ground. And then that is the requirement in order to attend the senior week activities. You must have turned in your tablet. You must settle all your fines. And then all seniors are invited to participate in senior week. That includes the early grads or remote students. And we have a great week of plans starting with Monday is going to be the senior festival. Tuesday, they have a spirit day where they're gonna go out to the stadium. They're gonna participate in uh, some activities, including a a junior class, uh, what the heck is that thing called? Powder puff. That's the one, the powder puff <laughs> together. And, uh, and then on Wednesday, uh, we reserve the swim club at Stratford for the seniors. They're gonna have a nice day uh, relaxing together as, a, as their own class. And then Thursday, the big deal is that is a mandatory day for all seniors that intend to walk in graduation. 8 a.m. begins with the breakfast provided in the auditorium. They'll practice and then they'll move on and we'll be ready for that day. So thank you to, to maintenance, thank you for Mr. Marley's, thank you for Ms. Packer, Ms. Phillips, everybody that's helping coordinate the junior class and Mrs. Epright and all those involved in project graduation, making that thing possible that week. It's gonna be a nice week for the seniors. One other note is that the yearbooks are in and the yearbooks will be distributed to the seniors at the Senior Festival, which is Monday, June 14th. They will get their yearbooks then that's one of the goals and plans of the Senior Festival is so that they can do their signing at that time. Underclassmen, we will let you know uh, later when we will distribute to you. So that's gonna come out later. I will send out an email. But for right now, the seniors, you'll get those during the Senior Festival on Monday, June 14th. Um, we approach the end of the school year. It's important for students and parents to know that days still count, that credits still must be earned and uh, so we, you got to finish strong. That's been the theme for the school year. Uh, we are sterling strong and you need to finish strong. So make sure you're doing that because everything does count. Now, for those students um, that struggled during this time, during this pandemic year, whether it was semester one or semester two, we are offering a summer credit recovery program. Summer credit recovery will be in person, fully in person. It's going to operate Monday through Thursday, beginning the week after the 4th of July, some students we're going to invite in a mandatory capacity because you need to get these credits in order to be on track to graduate. So we will be communicating that information this week and or early next week on who is eligible for that. And hopefully you as parents will support that process. There is no cost this year to the students and that is because it is funded through a national grant. And that is through this year, this summer. So it's the first time we've offered a summer program here in a long time, first time that I've been around mm -hmm. that that's been offered. And uh, but we're excited about it. It's a great opportunity for students, parents, and staff. And uh, so look for that information, but it's another way to help check 
off to make sure our students are prepared for graduation because some are just behind um, for the nature of what's going on in the pandemic. All right, with that being said, Mr. Manlove's joining us here. We wanted to talk a little bit about uh, the spring sports. We're wrapping up spring sports. Some teams have just finished. Some are still going on. So let's, let's get a little. Yeah, we are. And uh, Mr. Claiborne, before I hit that, I just want to say thank you to the parents of the class of 21. Uh, their involvement has been phenomenal. Uh, the Zoom meetings has, have been phenomenal. Uh, reach out to your students that senior week, Monday through Wednesday. I, I've joked about it with the advisors and on Monday through Wednesday is for you, the student. Come enjoy, have a great time. Thursday is for us to plan to make your graduation a success Thursday evening. So we want you involved every day. Thursday, we need you here. Monday through Wednesday, it's all for you. We want to see you here and having the best time you possibly can. And again, thank you to the parents of the class of 2021 for all your support uh, throughout the year. To sports, yeah. uh, sports season's coming down to an end, uh, slowly but surely. Uh, we're finishing up. Uh, NJSIA playoffs uh, have begun. I'll get through a quick wrap up of that in a moment. Uh, the sports seasons, um, were tougher this year. Uh, COVID hit. Uh, COVID hit hard in many schools. Uh, thanks to our coaches, our athletes, our staff, we did not get hit. Uh, our coaches did the right things. Our athletes did the right things. We personally never really missed time at the varsity level due to any COVID implications. So we're really proud of that, uh, that we set goals in the beginning. That was one of them, and we made it through. Sure. Uh, many successes. Uh, some of the programs we don't hear about often, our tennis team, our golf team, very young this year. Uh, we couldn't count the successes in the wins, but we saw the successes in the personal achievements. Uh, they Great. went out and went from knocking 10 strokes off, knocking 12 strokes off. The tennis team was starting to win individual matches. So a lot of mini successes along the way. Great. Track and field. Uh, this is a big weekend for them. They have their sectional meet, which will be at Delcy on Friday and Saturday, both boys and girls. Uh, group two sectionals we have high expectation i don't want to name names because i will miss some people but we have some phenomenal performers on both sides the jumps the sprints we just have some phenomenal performers uh, we're wishing them the best of luck and we love your support i know it's hard to get out with some of the rules still for gathering uh, that's a big event but you know we will keep you up to date on their advancement to the state level which will be next week and i know we're going to have people uh, that advance to that other playoffs that have come to an end our baseball team yesterday uh, lost a tough one to haddonfield uh, had a nice season, uh, had a, a closeout here against Haddonfield in round one of the tournament. Uh, not what we wanted, but again, there were some successes along the way. They overcame a lot of adversity. I uh, had a really positive season when you look back on it. Uh, softball, still playing. Uh, right. They defeated Barnegat in the first round. They will play, if anyone heard, they're not today. They will be tomorrow, which would be Friday at 3.30 at Haddon Heights. And I encourage you all to show up. Uh, we split with them during the season. I've, uh, I'm going to go out right now and predict a 6-4 victory. Uh, I think we're going to advance to the next round, and I think we can be wildly successful with this softball team. Great. You know, we keep our heads on straight. Um, looking at lacrosse, our girls lacrosse had a tough draw, had a great season, had a tough draw, went up to Wall, mm. a nice long bus ride there, uh, played a really, really good Wall team, I held our own, uh, did really well. Uh, season, again, had many positives in it. Boys lacrosse, I saved them for the last of the tournament here, uh, went 11-1. and one. Uh, won the SJILL National Division uh, League Championship in awesome. their inaugural season, awesome. which was phenomenal. Uh, watching them play, I learned the sport watching the boys and girls this year. I know nothing about lacrosse, I'll admit that. Learned the two different games and really are starting to appreciate the effort and the time that has gone in uh, to their sport. So, again, we're wrapping it up on a very positive note. We have gonna, volleyball too, right? Vo uh, volleyball, I'm sorry, we flipped the sport to yeah. boys volleyball. Uh, we hosted Pinelands. Yeah. Uh, and again, Pinelands, they have some phenomenal volleyball programs. Mm -hmm. They came up here, they took us out in the first round, yeah. but we were competitive. Uh, we had a season, again, very young people. I believe every single volleyball player is coming back next year. So right. what we did this year with a very young team is just going to be much better next year as we go through. So again, a lot of good came out of what could have been a really rough season. Awesome. Awesome. So we have, um, our goal was to have an opportunity for our students to play. And that goal was achieved, as you said. Um, our coaches did a great job helping protect, mm -hmm. making sure we're doing all of the pandemic related things and mm -hmm. the students did a great job with their part staying safe and keeping it safe. Yeah, we're proud of that it was hard yep. it was hard you're asking kids to compete with masks on yep. asking them to practice with masks on you're asking parents to show up uh if restrictions have been limited but we made it through that hard part and again probably more successful than anyone in the area one of the toughest things i felt like was we did a great job but um, for whatever reason other schools and the, the reflection really was in their sub varsity sports so many teams like just had to drop freshmen because their numbers were so low and so unfortunately that
hurt us because we weren't able to play as many games as we wanted to. It did dramatically. The number of freshman games were limited. To, you could probably count them on one hand. Yeah. It, it was unfortunate because, again, you practice every day to compete, and we would get a call the day of, sometimes yeah. the night before, sometimes the day of, that they couldn't field a JV and a freshman team. Some couldn't field a JV team. We were fortunate enough to have enough numbers to do it, but the teams weren't available to compete against. And I'm hoping, you know, that doesn't discourage people because, again, there was progress made. I, I did see the one freshman game in the backyard. There's progress being made. So, you know, there's, there's a bright future. We just have to keep sticking to it. Again, shout out to our sub varsity coaches, our JV and our freshman coaches collaborating with both teams to making sure that they, our students had the best opportunity possible. That was great. And I'd like to also throw out to the maintenance crew. They, they keep our fields in the best condition. I actually got to brag yesterday. Uh, Haddonfield's AD was here uh, just admiring our setup, admiring what we have. Yeah. Uh, they're landlocked, we're not. And right. just the fact that we have so many fields to work with and that they're in pristine condition, it, yeah. it's like a compliment to our maintenance crew. Awesome. Last night you had an event with the Colonial Conference, special night, kind of different. We did. It was actually, again, COVID affected this. It was actually a dinner banquet, which turned into just a presentation. It was great. Uh, my first time going through it, we got to see every, every Colonial Conference school with their scholar athletes, and ours were Alicia Thornton and Alex Brown. Uh, right. They represent Sterling High School really well there. Uh, we also got to see the Sportsmanships Award which we had Stephanie Kelly and Bruce Williams. Again, it was great to see the other schools and the camaraderie that when it was done, the kids knew each other. The yeah. kids were taking pictures. You see Alex with four or five other cross country runners that were also sportsmanship winners. They were yeah. also going to Stanford. Going to, it was, it was phen a phenomenal evening in a nice span that recognized the accomplishments of uh, the other reason we play sports. We don't just play to win, we play to learn things. And they, these kids showed that they did. Excellent. Excellent. Well, thank you for hosting. Thank you um, for your uh, challenges this year. I think that you probably got multiple years experience throughout the course of this year, having to rewrite, coming in the door in your first year, having to rewrite schedules for the fall. The winter, you had to rewrite three different times based mm -hmm. on what was going on. And then schools dropped because of COVID, not just for one game, but for like weeks. Right. And then the rescheduling. So the amount of experience in all of that that you received this year, yeah. um, thank you for doing I, such I, a I appreciate everything that yourself, uh, you've done for me. That Matt, it's great taking over a position from people that left the position in a great condition. So I appreciate everything you all have done to make this as smooth as possible. Very good. All right, guys. So uh, we're looking forward to the finish of our spring sports. It's been a wonderful season, and uh, we're looking for a strong finish to our school year. So thank you for being connected. Continue to support your students. And with that, it's a go Knights.